it's time for a visit with a person of high strangeness. Um, if we confused you thoroughly, that was actually the intent. What we're going to do today, we're going to go on um, uh, the set of my friend Elea Leland, and uh, she has a show down in Tucson. And so we thought we was going to share the interview that um, she's going to do with me, where actually I'm the guest. So if I was the host and the guest, that was the intention here. So I hope you have a wonderful time um, with Elea Leland and her show. Start journey, and yeah. thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you for coming. I'm I'm so excited because your show and um, the, the visit with the person of high strangeness was the inspiration for me creating my show, which mm -hmm. is Star Journeys. Um, you talked to me about you know I I came as a guest on your show once, and mm -hmm. I realized that oh my gosh, she does one show a week, or you have a different show on every week, mm -hmm. right? Every week. And you broadcast out of Olympia. Of, yes, out of Olympia, Washington. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just I was just fascinated by this. My gosh, she, she's out of Olympia. You have several other you have friends in other places. You have um, Anchorage, Alaska, and mm -hmm. Channel Forty Four. Wow. And when where else? Lansing, Michigan, Channel 16. Um, we're working on the yeah, Tucson, Tucson connection yeah. here. So, and uh, uh, it goes to Canyon City, Colorado, to the Zoom Club. Wow. And uh, as I said, we, where else? And uh, we network them all through the country. And so, like the Art Bell Fan Club, you know. <laughs> they, they watch Except it's the High Strangeness Fan Club. It is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now you have, there are several things that I have heard you talk about in your show that have been really interesting to me because, mm -hmm. you know, the little names and stuff. Um, one of them is Cropper. Now that's the name of your motor home, right? It is, the Cropper, yeah. And why did you name it the Cropper? Well, I didn't. Um, when we started out, uh, to give you a real quick background on here, um, I had this RV and decided to drive across country to um, to talk to people and visit with them. And uh, I was guided to get an RV. And uh, so Eilis, the um, coordinator for the crop circle um, studies in the US, she said, well, why don't we name it the crop circle explorer? Because ah. the intent was to go and stop places. And so that's what we did. That's what, what we named it, the crop circle explorer. Then had their number on it and also the UFO reporting center in Seattle, Washington. Well, it, it's a uh, speed limit was 55. And of course, I'm not going to speed in a strange place, you know. And so on the CP, I could hear where, the, where the, um, the truck drivers would say, well, just cool it just as soon as you get around that Washington cropper. Instead oh. of creeper, you see? <laughs> and that's how that became the cropper. Oh, that's mm -hmm. way cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I travel in an, an RV also, yeah, you and do. I, I tried to call this RV everything. I mean, I've been in different ones. As a matter of fact, I had a different one when you got cropper, mm -hmm. and now I have an Airstream. And, <laughs> and people called it. They, um, the, the people, I guess, that had it before called it the dragon, mm -hmm. and the steel dragon or the, or the iron dragon or something like that. And I didn't like that. And they called it the iron horse. I didn't like that. I tried calling it the silver cloud. Nobody, that didn't catch on. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and so what, is, what the upshot of it has been that it's, it's now being called the silver Twinkie. <laughs> Twinkie is pretty cool. Yeah, know. it's a shape like a Twinkie, so I guess that's okay. And Twinkie, you know, like twinkles. Like stars. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I guess I'll have to settle for it. Yeah. Now, how did you get started here at TCI? Because you're 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 doing your show out of TCI in TCTV. TCTV in Olympia, Washington. In Olympia. How did you get started there? You really want the truth? <laughs> sure. Okay. Here it is. This is about truth, right? It is. Yeah. Well, you see, after this, this cropper trip that I made, I wrote this book. And um, because of the book, I ended up on several talk shows, like in Anchorage, at Daze, and mm -hmm. uh, at her show and things. And every time they asked me something, and I was getting ready to explain it, they would either change my line of thought, go to a commercial, or take what I said and add their own thought to it. Oh. And so I had been invited by one of the local producers um, to come on the show, and the same thing happened. And on, so I determined at that time I was never, ever going to do talk shows again. Oh. And I'm mumbling this in no uncertain terms on the way out. So one of, uh, one of the staff here heard me say that. 
And he said, what are you mumbling? And I said, well, I'm never going to do this again. And he said, well, then do it yourself. And I was on the air three weeks later. Wow. Yeah. And you, you've done well over 100 shows, because when I was in the Northwest yeah. um, back, what, last year sometime, yeah. you had done your 100th your 100th show, and you were having it was like a celebration and whatnot. Yeah. So you've done well over a hundred shows. Obviously, you're doing them again, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I think we had hum, uh, at number 161 or 62. We lost track. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Now you you do this show. It's called The Visit with a Person of High Strangeness, and I I know I've been on your show um, talking about the border situation right. in in Arizona between Arizona well between the U.S. and Mexico and between the U.S. and Canada. And then we um, had another thing on talking about um, the, the support of the community for people that do metaphysical work and whatnot. So you cover, and then you did something with political stuff, you cover a huge range of topics. What is the objective of your show? What is it that you want to share with your, your viewers? Well, see, the key word is to visit. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, it, uh, I don't feel it's limiting me to anything. Uh, so I can really go from one extreme to the other. Right. And uh, so, but but we try to break it up a little bit. Um, we do uh, some legal shows. We we educated juries what to do on a jury duty. A lot of UFO shows, hardcore. I call them hardcore UFO shows. Crop circles, uh, the paranormal. Um, Sometimes just local artists or people off the street. We go on trips, you know. Yeah, and no, you you went to. I was watching one of your shows mm -hmm. um, last year. You you had gone to Colorado, Colorado. and you were shooting with a, a, a home video camera. Yeah, just regular uh, regular. You um, were in a closet, I think. Oh uh, yeah, the interview was, yeah, that was. Uh, we did an interview in the closet simply because. Uh, at the conference, they couldn't accommodate me with a <laughs> with a quiet place. Yeah, we've been to the Hopi Reservation. Uh, uh -huh. We've been to the Navajos. And now you do th that kind of filming is done on location. The, I I might want to add here for um, those listeners who are seeing this on the internet because my show goes onto the internet, so mm -hmm. it's on the World Wide Web. Um, so for those people who are seeing this on the internet, that the impetus for this or the, the facilities for this kind of this kind of um, uh, medium of being able to have television done by regular people is because of cable television it's access um, yeah. television access whether it's Olympia or Tucson or whatever part of the country and so when you go when you go on the road and do a show, you're using your own personal camera then, or I are you do. checking out cameras from the no, station? No, I, I, I do, see, because I don't stay in one place long enough because I find that um, schedules don't work well for me. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I run into a group of people and I'm not done, right. uh, I'm just going to stay an extra day. So, so I wouldn't like to burden myself with having to be on time all the time. I, I used to be perfect, but I don't do that. You're not I don't perfect, do perfect anymore. anymore yeah. <laughs> You're perfectly whoever you are, is that it? That's right, yeah. yeah. And so I prefer to, to work with my with my own equipment and then deal with it later. So you, you do, you shoot a, a group of um, tapes or whatever, and mm -hmm. then you take it into the studio and um, edit it into uh, things to present on, on the air. Is that how you do it? Well, I would actually have to answer that two ways. Okay. Uh, like some of the road shows, uh, what I do is I try to do as much in-camera editing as I can, and then I send it to my director, mm -hmm. uh, which is Bernie Shalosa. He's a mm -hmm. real genius. And I'll say, here, Bernie. <laughs> and Bernie, when next time I see it, he has just um, uh, put it together some kind of way, and it's, the show keeps on. That's one way to do it. The other one is that when I bring the raw tapes back, we will use them for inserts, doing the show as an insert, and then play what it is we need or we want. Oh, I think mm -hmm. that's what you did um, on the one that I saw where you were in the closet. I think right, you there, were was a, there was there was an insert because it, it it saves a lot of time when you use inserts instead of piecing everything together right. uh, the, the way it is. But when you leave the studio, um, which which just absolutely fascinated me, it put, I stuck you up on a pedestal. You know, you've got your little 
I, yeah, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, you're up there with, I don't know, Christ and the Virgin Mary, Mary oh my and all God. these people. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> because, you, because you're yeah. able to, when you walk out of the station, you have tapes that are broadcast ready. But I couldn't do that without the staff that I have. Right. It's like I, I come in here and I say, this is what we're going to do. And then somehow I expect them to read my mind, and they do. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so they deserve a lot of credit. And in fact, uh, several of my uh, directors, um, they would put things in the background when we chroma key, and I haven't even started talking about it. Right. And so then, of course, when you see it, uh, we have we have it's a little perfect. help. Yeah. We yeah. have divine guidance or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Now, how many directors have you had? You've got 160 some shows. Mm -hmm. How many directors have you had in 160 some shows? I've had three. I started out That's with it. Tom Dubuque, uh -huh. and um, then the next one was Justin Wright, uh -huh. and then Bernie uh, Solisa. Of course, uh, actually Bernie has been with the shows from the very, very first one. And he was your sound man mm -hmm. at yeah, one he time. He did the audio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and helped me with some editing, and now he's everybody. He's, a one he's everybody. <laughs> we, should, we, we should do a one-man show with Bernie. We should do a show with Bernie, right? <laughs> yeah. But then who's going to do all that stuff that he yeah. does if we're doing yeah. a one-man show with Bernie? Um, now, obviously, with all of this stuff going on, you have plans of other things that you want to do. And I know that you're, you're doing some kind of legal, metaphysical uh, the uh, mix master thing <laughs> with Washington and the fact that there was an earthquake and all of that and so you're you're dealing with that but when you get done with that what is what does it look like for you are you planning to, you're planning to go back on the road this um, you're going to be on the road in, during the summer of 2001 uh, yeah in that was my original plan of course then with the earthquake me losing my home and and the insurance not being able to make up their mind what they want to do so I'm sort of uh, I'm just floating, like I'm between those buildings. Uh, <laughs> the buildings, yeah, you wrote this book, and um, yeah. we need to show the audience this book. Yeah, it's, 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 it's um, called A Visit with the Person. Yeah, it's a, it's. No, it's not. It's a, the mar and the moral mar mar story, the story yes. one person mm -hmm. at a time. And you came to me with this book right after you had published it, mm -hmm. and I was doing a show, um, I think in Bellevue or somewhere, mm -hmm. and you needed a corner of my table, of which I didn't have any. Oh, no, it was the Boeing's. Boeing Fair, mm -hmm. yes. And I didn't have a corner of the table, but I ended up getting a book from you. Yeah. And I couldn't put the thing down. I was just, I was just fascinated. And it wasn't so much um, what you were saying as it was how you were saying it mm -hmm. that I found fascinating. It was like sitting down talking to you for 12 hours or however long it <laughs> yeah. took me to read this book. And so I kept reading it and getting all these, I mean, it was like being on the road with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're getting stuck between buildings and getting behind a fence and couldn't get out and um, just all the stuff that yeah. happened to you while you were traveling. Well, in essence, what had happened, um, I had went to, uh, I had been invited to come to Nashville. And so it was one of the few things that was planned and perfect and in place. Mm -hmm. And so it, then, of course, uh, when I got there, the lady decided she, she forgot to tell me she had to go on a trip. So she guides me in the backyard and she says, well, by the way, I have to go somewhere and I'll see you later. And she locks the gate. And um, so I physically got stuck between these two buildings. One was the, the Trade Center. And uh, there was a railroad track on this side and some kind of music studio on this side.